Lately I've been living on a high life we gon' live forever Ah, uh, yeah! Who is it? Hello? Hello? Hey, Ma. How you doing? I'm good. I got a question for you. Uh... If you can, if you could name all the cities that we've lived in together. Wow. All the that we've lived in together. Turn the music down. Are you and I? Yes. I mean, are you living on the city that I've lived in? That's what I'm saying. Name them all. <laughs> Don't be difficult now. Um. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Albany, Georgia. Okay. South Dallas, Georgia. Uh huh. Nashville, Tennessee. Uh huh. And Columbus, Georgia. Okay. We didn't. Wait. No, I got lost in the. Uh, we was in where Tifton when I got when I got uh where you about left me at Walmart. Or was that in Valdosta? Uh, first of all, I didn't leave you at, I didn't leave you at Walmart. I'm trying to set you up. <laughs> I'm trying, to, trying to get your mama a case. I threatened to leave you because you had a temper tantrum. Oh, listen, listen, kids have temper tantrums all the time. <laughs> the, the truth sounds okay, sick. So let, the, let the record show that I did not leave you or lose you. You threw a temper tantrum because you couldn't get on the carousel. Listen, listen. Keep talking. <laughs> Keep talking, sis. Listen. Don't listen to this guy. Don't listen. Keep talking. <laughs> Testify on this brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. If you wanted to pass out on the floor, they scream. And some kids, I said, I'm going to walk out. And so I started walking and he realized that I wasn't turning around. You got your head to jump up and you came on to the car. That has sense. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I will hope so. <laughs> but you were one, okay? So, you know, that's typical. He had but one sense. That, that was in Valdosta. <laughs> he said, I have, oh, that was in Valdosta. Okay. <laughs> I like you try to set your mom up. Uh, so what's that time you left me? <laughs> oh, whoa! Remember, remember uh, tell tell Mo the uh, what was it? A frog or a caterpillar that I had brought to you when we was in uh, Nashville? Huh? Yeah, I'm talking about the one that I had brought to you when we was in Nashville. That was a uh, that was a caterpillar that you had brought in the house. It was big and black. It had these long black hands on it. He, he probably like, just look. <laughs> He's gonna be my it friend like forever. It was <laughs> this is good stuff right here. He's my friend. <laughs> Thank you, sis. Um, you friend. No, friend. Nah, this is gonna be good. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Go um, let, listen, Mom. Go no, let it keep going. Mom. Let it keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna get this work no, no. today? You, you coming up on your minutes now? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you'll get this work today. Your favorite movie back then was Blade, and um, uh, who? What was it? So I used to have all the movies about Blade too. The white 
I already told Mom, more about my fascination with Spider Man as a kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. So when I first got it, I had two. I had the Stone Cold one. Wow. And I had the DDP. Wow. Yeah, but I had the DDP one first. Uh huh. And I ain't gonna lie. At first, I was terrified of DDP, bro. Since you did DDP. What'd you say, Ma? Mama! <laughs> I think she went out. Mama! We were living in Nashville then. She had backed that story up. First time you open it up, he started crying. <laughs> <laughs> this is good stuff. DDP had me, bro. And then, like, I'm not gonna lie, it took a minute, but after that, we put on some of the best wrestling matches never to be seen. <laughs> you, you a DDP? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Listen, I gave DDP to work, bro. Yeah, I bet. I ain't scared of you no more. <laughs> I, was hitting, I was hitting DDP with all type of rock bottoms. <laughs> you can't even stand up. <laughs> I was hitting DDP with everything, bro. I, I let him get a clothesline in. I let him get a clothesline in. That was about it. <laughs> That's good stuff, man. And you had every wrestling toy there. Was. Action figure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, don't disrespect me. Oh, okay. <laughs> action figure. <laughs> don't disrespect me now. <laughs> this child had every action figure there was. He had. Several of the same wrestler in different outfits. Listen, when you putting on these type of shows, they need you know what I'm saying. To be you, don't, you don't see him come out to the same gear all the time. Come on, he had, he had. I was just being three, authentic three, to the product. Different types of rings. He had stages and entrance areas. <laughs> Listen, it started. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what, what the, you know, uh, the crazy part. Why that sound like my childhood? <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't start, even laugh. Did you start like, off? <laughs> did, <laughs> wait, did you start off with the cardboard box? <laughs> but I started too? off with everything. Like, like took like, the shoe box and made that the uh, Titan Tron. When bro? mom left, no, you had an actual Titan. No, I'm saying, but before that, I would use the shoe box. Man, I used and to take like, cardboard box. That the action figure came in because he was using that for things. Come on now, I'm telling you, I had look, listen. I was building WrestleMania sets before they were. When I tell had you, had it looking good. This sounds like my childhood. I'm not gonna lie, a little bit. Besides that tantrum thing, hmm? <laughs> I think I used to cry. But definitely that tantrum thing. I didn't want to leave my mama's side. <laughs> 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 When my mama left, I was crying. You know, that's what they tell me. I don't know. You know, I don't know if it's true or not. They could be making it up. I didn't have any problems for him. Well, except for my queen, but he was sitting there behind himself, right? I had mm-hmm. to tell him, brother, all the time. Toys were always everywhere. Camping's the reason why Legos got banned in my house. <laughs> He's the reason why Play-Doh got banned in my house. Because he never would pick it up. Said, I want to see him. <laughs> Get him out! <laughs> and then, the only time I would have to worry about him was at night because he always wanted to sleep with me. Mm. But other than that, he was he was the best thing. Oh, I threw away my pacifier. Oh, this is good stuff. He threw away my pacifier. He said, get that junk out of here. At six months old. I'm done with this. I was like, all right, I'm not picking it up. Yeah, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> he tried me that first night, and after that, he never needed to do it again. Now, Kimber, hold on. Now, hold up. Now, you're going to a different thing now. Yeah. <laughs> she, you, you about to vent, or you need some advice? <laughs> <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that baby is so bad. I thought I was terrible, baby. Yeah, Ma said uh, she was trying to get me to let go of this. <laughs> that was a so good job for me to burn him that he couldn't let it go. I had wow. to knock it out of his hand. And so, it's so amazing that he never scarred. Like, only God does that. You know what I'm saying? God gave like, you Wolverine powers. I had, <laughs> I, feel, those, hey. <laughs> I had one of those barrel flat on. So it was like round on the outside. And when you open up, it was flat on the inside. Mm. So the hot part was all the way around. I had left it on the dresser and walked out of the room. And I said, Camp, don't touch it because it's hot. So he said, eat hot, mama? Yeah, eat hot. <laughs> <laughs> e hot. <huh? laughs> I like this. E hot. So I said, don't touch it. I went to the restroom, came back, and I was afraid. When I came back, he had it, and he had it. He had grabbed a whole barrel by the hand. He was Jeez. just standing there shaking, holding it. And I said, I had to knock it out of his hand. <laughs> I swear. I had, I almost had his whole body in the, in the tub trying to cool his hand off. I was just drinking the baby with water. What's this boy Ben stubborn? <laughs> what? Uh, What's that? Like, it should have had, it should have had third degree burns on his hand. It's Same, hot. bro. That was 400 degrees. He should have had third degree burns and his hands never scarred. Like, you can look at his hands right now after this Can't day. Tell. You will not see a right. scar anywhere. I don't even have that burn mark from the base. Well, you blessed, boy. You need to be thanking God every day. Well, he's good. He's always been favored by God and everything. I can remember when we lived in Nashville. I had a really good job, but I was also living above my knees. So I was I was paying out more really than I was getting in. Mm. And there was one day when I have, I only had enough money to get champ like uh, um, a cheeseburger, not even a cheeseburger. I think it was like a hamburger and a value fry at McDonald's. And I wasn't even going to eat that day. I was just buying food for him to eat. And champ wanted a happy meal. He wanted a toy. So. We go through the line, I order his food, and when we get to the window, and he said, I want a toy. And so I said, Tim, I don't have enough money to get you the meal that comes with the toy. You're going to have to get this cheeseburger and these fries. And the lady that was at the cash register overheard him say, I want a toy. And she reached down and grabbed the toy and handed it to She said, Get that baby this toy. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it was just. Little things like that. He's Acts. always been favored by God. And it always. shall be given. Come on, bro. You better walk in that favor, boy. What's wrong with you? Why don't you ask for our TV station? <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. You see? <laughs> Why don't you ask for your mama's mansion? You know, like... <laughs> You better start using that favor. For real. Favor, boy. He looking out for you, man. Okay, well, uh, you good. Yeah, you got exactly, uh, you did great. What we needed. Sounds All right, well, I'm going to Girl, I, miss I love you, you too, so much. I miss you too. <laughs> Good. I, I, I get to walk around the way I want to walk around. <laughs> Kendall, go in the room. <laughs> I really, really miss you. I miss you, hers. I miss you, Naomi. I miss all that. Oh. Mm. 
But I want you to know how proud of you that I am. Come on. How, 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 an amazing man of God. And it, it brought my heart so much joy to hear you singing on the live. Because you know, I've always tried to cultivate that in you. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> totally I just want you to know, and I know I tell you, you know, all the time, but I just am um, proud of you. And it makes my heart so happy tomorrow. And I hope you know how much I thank you. Yes, man. Oh man, to God be the glory. <laughs> She's trying to break a brother down. I know. Uh, let's go to commercial. <laughs> Have to go to commercial. He's worth it though. He's definitely worth it. And eventually, right. I'm going to get to you. I'm going to pour into you too. <clears throat> That's on the next podcast. And that was Mama RJ, yo. <laughs> love you, Ma. I love you, honey. All I right. love you, Mom. Love you, too. All right. Bye, y'all. All right. We've all, it's always been just us for the most part. Of course. Like, Me. we intertwine like that where Snap, I'm not like going to let the whole giant, table over. My bad. <laughs> like, I, ne- I never let none of that junk, like, get to me to the point to where I don't want to go talk to her. Like, that's the frustration part of it. Like, we're so close. Why did this have to be like this? Mm. Well, I think it's part of the perfect plan, though, if you think about it. Like, the perfect wedge between a mother and her son, the perfect wedge between a father and his his, his son. The wedge between anybody yeah. is an ultimate perfect plan because number one, pride will keep you away from it. Mm-hmm. And pride will keep you in a space that you feel like, okay, I can't really talk to her about it because, yeah. you know, she might say this. And yeah. then, like, you paint this whole picture in your head. Like, uh-huh. you know, she gonna say this. I'm gonna say, Ma, I feel this way. She gonna say, get out of my face. <laughs> you stupid. You know? Yeah, <laughs> but ultimately... The best road to recovery is communication uh. to anything. Um, just talking things out. Oh, yeah. And number one, not only just talking things out, but hearing, hearing, hearing both sides. Like, hey, mm-hmm. this is how you made me feel. Especially with it with your mom, it's different. Especially yeah. when you older. Yeah. When you older, you like uh yes, did that. <laughs> it, it, it's like a kid party You still on the inside yeah. You're like uh, I don't know if I should say this I'm just gonna ask for some Fruit Loops <laughs> <laughs> we need some fruit, You know what I'm saying But for the most part It's that respect for her Number mm-hmm. one And then it's that I need to get this off my chest Yeah And I guess For this intro You know for me 
for those who don't know me, I'm Mr. Madeover. Um, my childhood raised in Canton, Ohio, always dying. Mm-hmm. Um, born and raised. So for me, my childhood, I'm going to keep it brief and simple. <laughs> uh, I was called a miracle baby. When are you supposed to be here? My mom was taking births of birth control while still being pregnant with me and you know what birth control does it controls the birth pretty much (laughs) so I made it through that and you know I came out of that and was still born so which means I'm still here for a mission Um, growing up in Canton, Ohio I was always the odd man out Mm -hmm. I I was the, the the kid that was overlooked. I was never bullied because of my family. That's the only reason. I think <laughs> if I had my family surrounding me, I'd probably been bullied. Okay, I was bullied a little bit in my family. Now they bullied. <laughs> you were bullied <laughs> by your family. <laughs> it's a different story. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Outside, it's like you better not touch it. Uh huh. You're going to get the illest work. And it's going to be every time we see you type stuff. <laughs> Inside is a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I got an older brother, one year older than me, mm-hmm. and then I had three sisters. So, you know, my dad passed when I was older, by like twenty something. Yeah. And he he was we we were actually about to get we was in a he was in a on that verge of basically rekindling everything. Mm-hmm. Getting back together, yeah. I've seen my son, and uh, about a week later, he ended up passing away, and uh, shook my foundation, which let which let me know how important he was to my life. Even mm-hmm. though we had our distance, mm-hmm. but you know, to lose anybody, that'll show you where you at as far as in your heart. Yeah, a lot of times you lie to yourself, like man, it's cool. <laughs> I don't care what happened to him, but ultimately, when that stuff happened, when your dad. Pass. It's a it, it's a crazy feeling, man. Yeah. At first, I ain't believe my mom coming like, "Hey, your dad passed. He had a seizure. He never came back." And I was like, "Huh?" I always felt like my dad was Mister Untouchable. Mm-hmm. I always felt like that. Even when he had his bottle in his hand, he was still Mister Untouchable to me. Yeah, but I was the opposite. Wow. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love my dad. I do. You thought he was definitely touched. No, because... Touchable? Because once everything went down, like, like, once those promises started getting broken, oh, yeah. I seen the flaws. So it's like, okay, you can mess up. What else are you doing? Not, not, not mess up, but he gonna be here forever. Yeah. When I say, like, untouchable, I'm talking about, like, he gonna be here forever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never thought I never thought in a million years I'd lose my dad. Ever. Yeah. I always thought, I always thought he was gonna be here. God like, like I knew he was flawed, you know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, I knew yeah. he had issues, you know. He didn't want to tell my mom and dad. He took he took my mom, he's like, yeah. Yeah, I took him to a bar. <laughs> oh, you ain't supposed to say that out loud. What you doing? Chill, man. That's supposed to be our secret. Come on now. I mean, he never let me drink there. But, <laughs> I mean, but when he said that my mom took me away so mm. lost my dad then I lost both my grandmas two pillars two other pillars in my life and I was like a year apart mm. uh, dang near a year apart getting hit 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 so long story short I ended up coming to Columbus, Georgia mm-hmm. tell them why uh, cause of my beautiful uh, queen she yeah. yeah, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> my queen, God threw her out here as bait. I'm, that's right. I'm telling on you. I'm telling on you today. So uh, <laughs> telling on you today. He like so what? <laughs> what? Yeah, I did it. <laughs> so the way I can get you to listen. Come on now. But uh, <laughs> threw my queen out there as bait. 
I had no coming to Columbus, Georgia. Said I didn't want to go to no black church. Mm-hmm. I said that. Yes, I didn't want to go to no black church. I didn't want to deal with nothing that had black church written on it. No <laughs> Baptist. No, no nothing. And we got that was my mindset. You understand that? Like this. This is what I'm talking about. Like that. This was my mindset. I didn't want to be in church for 12 hours. <laughs> I didn't want to do 5,000 revivals Come on now. In one week Come on um, I just didn't want I was like churched out Literally like I grew up in the church I forgot to tell you that Mom is an evangelist mm-hmm. But I was churched out I was done with church I was no part of church <laughs> So I, You know my wife went to uh, World Changes Tabernacle mm-hmm. You know where the word is on in the end we and they love you. Love so you. so I came in, my wife's like, they're gonna be hugging you. You know, when you come in they get they hug you. I'm like, please ain't nobody gonna hug me. Please. You got me messed up. That's so I see. walk in and the deacon said, Hey, what's going on, brother? And he reached out like this and I said, Come on in, let's go. <laughs> come on, let's bring it. Bring it in. Yeah. <laughs> so went to church one time it was on a Wednesday and I really enjoyed myself because the way the word was put, it was, I understood it. Yeah. Facts. Facts. Like, I didn't walk away like, hey, what do you mean when he said that nah. such and such and such was going to come up? And then after he said, ah, ah, like, <laughs> but when I came, I got such a simple word and with no routine. No routine. And that's what kept me. And for me to get a word and understand it, it was a word you didn't have to look up and like, hold on, hold on, what, what does this mean? <laughs> like, and you got, I was still in the world. I, I'm trying to think, was that how I went to church? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, it was a simple word. And that simple word is what brought me to be a man of God that I am now. Mm-hmm. Literally. And they are my spiritual parents. I've been here for seven years, married seven years. You know what I'm saying? So for me, that's who I am. Yeah. That's why I call myself Mr. Made Over. Yeah. I was made over new. Yeah. I came. If you, if we can get mom on the podcast. Lovely. I would love it. Because understand, I came from, as mom put it, from the club to the church. <laughs> but I never be, I never looked back at the club. Mm-hmm. I never looked back. I'm still not going to look back because <laughs> it's pointless. Right. I think if you're 30 anything and you're in the club, <laughs> you're wrong. Uh, first of all, you can't stay up that long. <laughs> so whatever you're drinking, you're smoking. Put it down. But uh, <laughs> but Man, I'm I'm 21. I don't want to go. You, you shouldn't because... Uh. Y'all people, they crazy. Y'all bro. age, y'all shooting up to everything. Y'all, y'all, y'all like and the crazy. Down. Y'all shooting like this. <laughs> no aim. <laughs> <laughs> Stepped on my shoe. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I am who I am because of where I am. That's why I always tell people: yeah. show me your surrounding, not tell you your future. Uh-huh. So it, it, if you ain't going nowhere, you ain't doing nothing in life, look at your surroundings. Yeah, yeah. I came here with nothing but gained everything. Yeah. And I ain't finished yet. That's the crazy Ooh. part. Ooh. Hold on. Am I, am you I going being aggressive? In, bro. I'm going in, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, though. Get I came him. here. I Get came here with him, nothing. Bro. Came here with nothing. Nothing but a keyboard. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm gaining everything. And, and this is without me asking for it. Yeah. It's without me asking for it, man. No asking, no handout. I'm like, God, I just want to serve you this time. Like, I don't deserve none of this. Mm-hmm. But you see fit to give it to me. Come on now. You know, it's crazy. Well, I'm going to leave. You know, what's crazy to me is uh, I didn't realize until like earlier this week that I've literally been like here. If you really count the time span, even with me moving back to Albany, I've yeah. still been here yeah. for it. 10 years mm. A decade And a crazy part Okay Let's take that decade this I've podcast, been here a decade Podcast just went to A whole different story <laughs> So Take that decade Right mm-hmm. it's, So it's kind of like What you gonna do with your, with your next decade I was looking at it Like this Because Like This is one of those Positive things That's about my mindset That I can see Mm-hmm. You know how in the mind, 
it's gonna take you a long time before you find that diamond. Oh yeah. I felt like those beginning years, we was getting closer. But because we couldn't see the diamond, uh-huh. or I couldn't see the diamond. Yeah, right? you definitely couldn't see. <laughs> I definitely seen it. That's what I'm saying. So I couldn't see the diamond. I didn't know how to push through. Mm. But now I, that I'm seeing it. I'm going to tell you what it is. It's, it's funny you say mm-hmm. that. It is not that you weren't taught how to push through. Mm. And I, and the crazy part is, as a man, we the weight that is put on our shoulders, yeah. we're taught to basically push through. I don't give a care how you do it. You better push through. But ultimately, Maybe it's I'll like, teach, teach me how to push through. <laughs> yeah, don't don't, yeah, don't yeah, tell yeah, me. Yeah, just don't yeah. tell me to push. Come on now. How to push. Do I push with my legs? <laughs> you know, like, a, a, am I bracing myself? Like, what, like, what am I doing? Yeah. So... And it's, this will make it so crazy for me when I came here. When Dad was like, "Hey, Dad, show me everything." Like as a man, this is what you do. This is the guidelines you go by. Mom was like, "Hey, this is how you be a man of God. <laughs> this is how you do this. You don't do this." Yeah. I mean, I bumped my head when I got here. And they both told me, uh, like just recently, when I was talking to them, they, I was. They said, uh, "They said we seen the gift in you before you did." That's facts. I seen the gift in you when you was a little little kid, <laughs> turned up and down the keyboard. <laughs> Look at this little. Yeah, it was what separate I'm talking times. About, man. But I remember those talks where Dad was like, "I've been seeing it in you from the first time we met." I feel like mom, mom and dad always plant seeds. They do. Like I knew for a fact. Like looking back on it now, it's like okay, you ain't give nobody else no hot dog. <laughs> you get nobody else no hot dog <laughs> but <laughs> like literally when I think about it like everybody was up there for the uh, outreach mm-hmm. everybody else is getting their stuff passed out yeah yeah I personally get brought up to you and you hand it to me yourself I want to see you in church now. They plotting on us, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> they get you with food. That's how they do it. So, I, like, when I first came here, mom Come was on. like, hey, uh, she was so nice. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, this lady got to be up to something. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, she's like, hey, you want to go to uh, steak? I think it's like Outback Steakhouse, something like that. One of the steakhouses. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was uh, like, uh, "Was it Longhorns? Probably, because Longhorns was they spot for about yeah. Wow. Longhorns. She one of those. She's like, "You want to go?" I said, "Uh, you know, I was newly here. Yeah. I think like, you want to take me, man? You know, okay. <laughs> Who's paying for this? <laughs> 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 I just told you, I came here with a dollar to drink, and I didn't even yeah, have yeah, a dollar, yeah. just a drink. <laughs> but uh." And she was like, we get, we go into the restaurant and uh, she was like, just sit us anywhere, bro. I swear to you not. It was a huge round table, mm-hmm. huge round table. Oh, you for sure had long horns then. Huge round table. It's just me and her. What we had a huge round table for? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she was like, get what you want. Who? <laughs> you talking me? You know, me being modest. Yeah. Go ahead and get this burger real quick. <laughs> Cause if she can't pay for it, <laughs> if she can't pay for it, it's not gonna be because of me. Because <laughs> mine costs 1075. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's all you gonna get. Go ahead, let me get the steaks. I'm like, yeah. man. But that's how I mean She didn't get me with food mm. But what I'm trying to say Food was involved Food was definitely involved Now nah, I'm gonna look So Like After the outreach right mm. We going to the church We there for about A good month JR Is uh That's what I was close with At the time Yeah He had adopted me in As, uh. ba- as baby bro That's what's up So He was like yeah I'm going to come pick you up and then we're going to go over here to my house. I was like, we're going to do what? <laughs> he was like, yeah. He's like, you, you just going to stay with me tonight. All right, okay. 
Oh, right. <laughs> so I, I was like, I thought we was just playing basketball, man. Ain't mm-hmm. no of this. Where this going? <laughs> so he picks me up. We chilling for the most of the day. Yeah. Get to mom's house. I kid you not. Because this was uh, before the marriage. Okay. So this is one. Okay. We got you. So we go there and mom's got a full dinner already ready before we even pull up, bro. Y'all been planning this. That's what I'm saying. It's a plot. I'm like, hold on. And you the culprit, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. Then she got on the phone with somebody. It was like, yeah, I just had to feed my sons real quick. Man, you can see, you, so you got in there early. No, like, literally, That's I was up, literally man. adopted in. That's what's up. Like, thank y'all since, for the adoption. Since I got here. Yeah, thank y'all for the. Yeah, I appreciate for, it. For adopting man. us. Uh, man, y'all ain't. Y'all didn't have to. Yeah. <clears throat> and they took us up under our wings. Mm-hmm. And that's why we are truly the man of God that you see today. Yeah. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the podcast. I'm Mr. Made Over. And I'm RJ. But as my mama would say, champ. <laughs> Bless his heart. That's just um, a family nickname. That's all it is. <laughs> Y'all get to know it later on down the oh, line. Nah. Man. So at the end of the day, keep God first. Like I always say, if you show me who you're surrounded by, I'll tell you your future every time. Come on. Look at who's around you. If a person's not in your life bringing you up, you got to get you got to cut some people off. Mm-hmm. In 2020, clear vision, COVID-19, I think is, I mean, y'all got time to sit down and chill for a little bit more, I heard. But Take time to reevaluate your life and who's around you. So when you do get out of this COVID-19, you can start making moves like you're supposed to. Iron sharpen, sharpens iron. Oh, day, man. So you can't do nothing if you got a dull knife. You 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 can't sharpen yourself next to some paper. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> man. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. So like we always say, man, keep God first. And the rest will be added. This is TBK Podcast. And until next time, we ain't got no dues, but we but still, we still <laughs> gonna bid you adieu. We out.